Well, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, here we are again. Now, this is done on the same day. I've, I've just broken it into two. Oh, I hope God is with you today. Oh, I pray that your strength is being invigorated because we have a great God and he is coming for us very, 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 very soon. Do not doubt. Don't let anybody put doubt into your heart. Don't get impatient. We must have patience. Remember, because you kept the patience of my faith, I will keep you from <laughs> the things that come on the earth to test them all. He promises, he tells us over and over. How many times do people need to be told to believe that there is an escape before the tribulation? Not before the time of sorrows, but my darlings, when the great tribulation starts, you will know it because if you're still here, it's not going to be life as usual. There will be actual demonic beings. There will be giant locusts that are stinging people that are so painful and you can't die. There are going to be flames from the heavens. There's going to be a three-year drought. There's a three-and-a-half-year drought. There are going to be two witnesses and you are going to witness them being attacked and yet the enemy will die. When two witnesses show up, you know that's the tribulation, the great tribulation. We get tribulation. Christians have been in tribulation since the day of Jesus. And we still are to varying degrees. Some of us have been blessed by being placed in a, an area of relative safety. Others are, oh, we must pray for those in dangerous, dangerous places. But all in all, throughout the Old and New Testament, he always says, pray to be found worthy. If you keep the patience, you can escape. The, the seven churches, there were two churches that he said, I'm not going to send you into it. There were others that he said, if you overcome, I won't put you in with the rest. He's always telling there is a remnant, a called out people that must separate themselves. They must be a set apart people. They can't be just going along with the crowd. The ones going along with the crowd go with the crowd into the tribulation, the great tribulation. The ones that have set apart, that have believed the truth and not the lie that have readied themselves, they will be taken out. Taken as a friend, as an, as an associate. Paralambado, they will come up. They will be raptured as a friend. They will be taken Hapozo, they will be hapozoed as paralambado, as a friend and associate. You want to be in that group that take, I'm going to take you up, you're my friend, you're my bride. I'm going to take you up to be with me. I'm rescuing you. You want to be in that group. You don't want to be in the part of the church that... He said, oh, you've done this and unless you overcome that, you're going into that to be tested. So many out there are telling people that we must go into the great tribulation when Jesus and the Old Testament have always said there will be a 
called out group, the believers, the true believers, the the righteous. We aren't righteous in our own right. We are righteous in putting our faith and our trust in the Lord to take us, to save us, because he is salvation. He will save. He is Yeshua. God, yeah, God, salvation. Shua means salvation, to save. God will save us if we believe. Everything through the Bible, it was, if you believe. Abraham was given righteousness because he believed and trusted in the Lord. Sarah, righteous because she believed. Isaac, righteous because he believed. Jacob, righteous because he believed. Enoch, righteous because he believed. Righteous was attributed to them because they believed. If you doubt, you can't be attributed righteousness. The pattern is set. The explanations are there. You believe, you receive. And not in that modern, naughty, monetary, um, prosperity thing. The lady that touched the hem of Jesus, he said, because you believed, you have received. When he made the blind man see, because you believed, you have received. All the way through, the receipt came from the belief. The salvation came from believing So we must believe. We can't let anyone steal our, our trust in the Lord, our blessed hope. It's not the blessed, oh, I'm going into a great tribulation. I'm going to be torn apart, head chopped off. That's not a blessed hope. Blessed hope is the, oh, he said he's going to come beforehand it's getting close, but I believe he's coming and he's coming for you if you believe. So keep believing and don't let anyone steal your blessed hope. Now, let's get on to some more dreams. So much, oh, dreams, my goodness, God is, is pouring them out on, on his old people, isn't he? <laughs> And they are so different to regular dreams. Oh, you could not. Those of you that aren't having the dreams, you cannot imagine the difference, how we know it's not just a dream. It is so. Reality has nothing on these dreams. And you do feel. In a normal dream, you're not feeling physicality. These dreams, you feel it. If something bumps you, it really bumps you. If something is grabbing you, it is really, you feel it. Even after you wake, you can still feel, I still feel the snake hitting my foot. It is more real than life in the awake state when you have these dreams. So those of you that have had them, and they can be disturbing because until you know what it's about... You feel it's about yourself. 90% of the time, they're not about yourself. In these dreams, I have seen tsunamis that have taken place. I expect it was to prepare me for what's happening now. But I can tell you that I did see, and this is not me trying to build myself up because to me this wasn't, this was scary. I did see the Twin Towers in America come down. I saw the people inside. I saw children inside and I saw them being taken back in and I'm 
screaming out, come out, come out, don't go back in. And I saw people being directed back in and they obeyed. And I, for me, this was, but it came down like, what I saw was that, but what I also saw was I thought lava. You see, I saw what looked like molten lava flowing inside. So to me, my first thought was these are two volcanoes side by side coming down and people inside in offices. It didn't make sense. And as they came down, I saw people spiralling before, but instead of coming out, they were going in. And I saw all of that and it was so disturbing because I didn't know what I was seeing. It didn't make sense. And then one day I walked past the television that mum and dad were watching. I wasn't watching it. I had told them of this dream and how confusing and how horrible it was. And the smoke of it that, that came out and people coming out of the smoke. And as I walked past, I glanced at the television and it was the identical vision that I'd had in my dream. And then I understood that the coming down spiralling that was in those staircases and, and they were being told to go back before it happened. And, and I realised it wasn't me there. I started to realise, likewise, that big tsunami and it showed me where I was going to be. I wasn't, not me, but where it was going to land at the worst. And I could point down in the dream, I pointed to where I lived. And when I got a map out and pointed the direction that I saw me pointing, there was me pointing to my house from exactly where the tsunami did the worst damage. I saw a big, a big, um, boat sink with all people on board. I saw those things. I've seen all sorts of shocking things. And many of you are seeing them. And they happen. Those ones are, I thought it was demonic because the church would say, no, that's, that." no, it wasn't. That was the preparation for me to know that what I see in these really, really um, multi-dimensional dreams, the ones that hang into you, that don't, don't leave you. I've seen tsunamis coming. I've seen so much coming. I know it is coming. I have seen cannibalism. It is coming. Things that you see in these dreams but we have to realise it's not us in the dream. All these times I tell you about the dream and it's me doing this and my family, it's not about us. It's just the way that God lets us understand what's about to happen so we can express it in a way that you can understand. So I preface it that, that, these dreams are so real because they are going to be real. The meanings are to be understood. They're not, God isn't keeping things a secret. God is trying, and many of you are having dreams. Don't be frightened. I was, it took me a long time to understand it's not me going to go through this. It took me a long time to understand. When you see these absolutely horrendous things, it doesn't mean you're going to be there. It means you need to warn somebody. Find a way of letting people know this is coming or find a way to, to ready your heart to, to tell people the truth. Because if you don't, tell them the truth they don't know to get away from it if you don't tell somebody the gospel the good news 
They don't know what's coming and how to escape. So this is to prepare your heart to get you feeling a love for others that you don't want them to go through what you know is about to happen. It's putting the fear of God into you and from the fear of God comes wisdom. So don't fret. Now, here I am with the next dream. The next dream was I was riding along on a push bike, which I can't ride. The only time I got on one, I fell off and broke my leg. Never again. <laughs> I was riding on a push bike and I came across a lady who's an elderly lady whose car had broken down, but we were in a danger situation. She was being chased. And the only way we could get out of there, I couldn't help her with the car. I knew nothing about that sort of thing. So all I did, I picked her up and put her on my handle pass and we are pedaling, well I am pedaling with all my might as we're escaping these horrendous people that were trying to destroy us. But somehow that push bike carried the two of us to safety. We just kept pedalling and we got to safety. Now that one, it's a bit strange again, but what I make of it is where to help one another. There will be some of us that are still got the energy to go on, but there are some that have got so tired they feel old. I have my days, I feel very old sometimes, and I have my days when, and just one of you, and this is, I thank God for you. There'll be a day that I'm feeling really tired and down and am I able to help anybody? And then one of you will just put a comment there and say, this is just what you needed for that moment. Well, when you do that for me, that is what I need when God puts it on your heart to say something to me. You do not know how much that gives me the energy to go on again. And I don't just say that for myself. I look around and I see so many people that are doing their best. Some of them, you think that they are so, so successful. I see some that have thousands of, of followers and millions of, of views. And I see tiredness in their eyes. When you are given the little push with God to just say something comforting to the person, and I pray that you will do this to as many. Uh, I'm not begging for it for myself, don't get me wrong. But there are beautiful, beautiful people out there trying their best and they're doing wonderfully but remember to encourage them please those that are putting on everyday comments um, those that are doing putting hours and hours into productions I can't even understand how they do these things I can talk to you for a few minutes and I can be exhausted at the end of it. And these people are obviously doing the entire day on it and day by day by day. So I ask you, um, I encourage you to give them encouragement. And you may think your encouragement is not of any value. They're not even going to look at it you will be surprised who looks at it. I, I put a message on one of these. 
Oh, wonderful, wonderful brother in Christ. And he responded. They don't all respond, but he responded in appreciation. You don't think they're going to be looking, they are looking. Because just like you and I, they also need encouragement. Yes, they're full of the Holy Spirit. The helper is with them, but they also need confirmation that you care, that you it helped you, that you understood something. Because we can say things and not know that a single soul understands. In fact, I rant and I, I'm, did it make sense even what I'm saying? I don't know because this is just a, as I start, I finish and God just tells me, get on there, use your voice and tell them this. Whether or not it makes sense, I don't know. But I trust the Lord that he will open your ears to what you need. But it does help if I know that it wasn't totally stupid this time. <laughs> but that's, that's something I'm asking you for everybody. If you find that somebody, you may even not agree with something, but don't get aggressive. Put an opinion for a thought, and that's a wonderful way to do it. If you come across something on any channel that you don't agree with, put a thought, put your reasoning, but do it with respect. Don't attack one another, please. Always back it up with scripture, though. Always back it up with scripture. If you're coming against somebody scripturally, don't just say you're wrong, you're sinful, you're this, you're that. Say, well, I'm not sure that what you've said there is right. I've got this scripture and I think that means this. That is a perfect way to speak to somebody and let them know they can then read did I really misunderstand what I was told of God and then they can go on and and okay I didn't know that or does it fit maybe it doesn't fit maybe it does but we're meant to communicate not to fight we are one body imagine if my arm was fighting my leg I wouldn't get very far I mean I've already got a finger <laughs> hurt I don't want more hurts can't stop thinking about it it does hurt oh dear anyway so where did I get to I think I spoke about the the lady on the bike yes so there we have the world is chasing us we are getting tired, but we can pick one another up. When somebody needs somebody else to pedal, to do the work, to carry on. You see, nobody has to rely on, for instance, if, God forbid, but if YouTube does wipe out this channel, What if he then gave you the dreams that you're going to pick me up and carry on? Not me personally, but pick up the message. Will you carry it on? If somebody's been knocked down, will you finish the race? I think this is what this is about. Are you willing, if you see somebody super tired, to encourage them? But if you see them taken out, unable to move on for a reason, are you there to pick up and take the race on? So that's that one. How willing are you? And I don't mean to say, to be accusational or anything because we all have our own gifts and our own purposes 
But if he puts it on your heart, if he shows you something and puts it on your heart, are you willing to take over? I, I know you are. You have courage. You, you are beautiful. Every one of you are beautiful because you have him in you. And he will lead you in everything you need. He will. Now, this, the dream that really woke me up this morning. Oh, I did have another couple of dreams, but they're not. I'm, I'm running out of time here. I'll, I'll talk about them later, another time. But the one that woke me up, this one will get you. This one is exciting. I was at a university in the accommodation sections and there were people coming and going and then the word was given out, we have to pack up. And I had so much to pack up and I'm thinking, oh, I've got plenty of time, you know. We've got days before we have to go home. Because it was the end of the end of the what did they call that season in the end of the season um, at a university you have like oh semesters it was the end of the semester and um, so we all had to get ready to go home because those accommodations were to be empty and they bring more people in after we had gone so we're all packing up and I'm just packing up gently, thinking, oh, I've got days, there's days. And I had a lot of big parcels. I don't know why I had these big parcels, some of which I had not used yet. Um, that's an indictment on me, I'm sure. I haven't done everything that I was meant to do, that I was put to do. So that's, that's like the chastisement. He only chastises those he loves. And in the dream, that was, I believe, a chastisement for me. And I do take that on board because I look back at my life and I think there was so much I could have done that I didn't. So many times courage wasn't in my personality. So anyway, I take that one. Um, now... I'm I'm going around and everybody is really rushing and I'm why are they rushing so much? And I came to these senior girls. I don't know why I knew they were senior, but they were senior girls. And I went to those and they were almost packed. And they said, Well, have you are you packed? And I said, Oh, we've still got plenty of time. And she looked at me, the the most senior one of them. She looked at me and she said, where'd you get that from? We've got 20 minutes and we're gone from here. And I, 20 minutes, but I've got so much to do. I said, doesn't matter. It closes in 20 minutes. And I, whoa. So I got back to my room and lo and behold, I only had a little vehicle and there was no way I was going to get everything in. I thought I had days go a load here and a load there. I thought I had days. But I got back to my apartment and I knew I couldn't get it in my car. And there was a truck, a flat bed truck. I don't know what you call them, but, you know, they they haven't got a cover on. It's just the, the long flat bit that you stack things on and tie things down with. It was one of those sitting there and there was a team of workers picking up all my stuff and putting it on the truck and we were ready to go. <laughs> but it said 20 minutes. Now, I know that doesn't mean our time 20 minutes. But it was a rush, it was close, it was, well, we better be ready because it's about to happen. So I am of 
a certainty. The time is upon us. Now again, day, hour, don't know. But it was quicker than I thought. It was quicker than I thought. And I think it's quick. They said 20 minutes. I thought I had days. Now what days was? This is all interpretation. I just know he's coming quicker than we think. And he's telling us in everything, get ready, get ready, get ready. The demons are about to come. He has to get us out before. Because once the restrainer is taken, it's our prayers, it's the the infilment of the Holy Spirit. He cannot take the Holy Spirit away without taking us. He said, I will never leave you. Once I've got you, you're with me. We are the friend he takes. We are the paralambano, the one that he takes as a friend. The Holy Spirit is a friend. He takes the friend out so that great tribulation can come. We are part of the retainer, the Lord, and we are one. We are a cad. He said he will make us part of him. We are part of him. We are the bride, and when the bride and the groom come together, they become one. We must be ready. We are about to be taken as a friend, as an associate. And it is so soon. He loves you. He's coming, and let nobody take away your blessed hope. Let nobody tell you that when he said to pray always to be found worthy to escape all that is to come upon the earth, to test those that dwell on the earth, don't let them take that. Don't let them take his promise that if you keep the patience of my faith, I will keep you from the tribulation to come. Don't let them take that from you because your righteousness is given to you by the covering of Jesus Christ. Because you have set yourself apart from the world, he will do all he promised. Be ready at a moment's notice because the sky is about to open. God bless you. I so want to see you all on that beautiful blessed cloud. Thank you, every one of you that watches and encourages and encourages one another. If I don't see you before then, let's have a big party. God loves cake. I know that because Sarah was asked when Jesus came to Abraham and Sarah in the tent, Abraham told her to prepare the meat and cakes. So, if God loves cakes, that means the party's on. It's cakes. If I see you again before then, that simply means we don't know and he's not going to tell us the exact moment. We He wants to surprise party us. So let's stay excited. Let's not, don't let anyone pull you down. Because when it happens, it's going to be exciting. And it's going to be when you don't expect it. What a lovely surprise. I mean, if you know there's surprises there, it's not a surprise. If you expect it at the moment, 
you've got time to say, well, I, he's not coming like me in the dream. I've got plenty of time to sort that par those parcels out and, and do what I want to do. Plenty of time, because I know it's not for three days. But then when I was told, no, it's happening 20 minutes, it was like, ah! <laughs> it was so, so stressful. <laughs> but then he solved it. He gave me the truck. He said, Robin, no, you're coming. It's all right. I've got it sorted. So we don't have to worry if we don't know the exact moment because he's got it sorted. As long as we don't dally and pop back into the world. So let him guide you. Let his word be the, the strength. Let, don't let other people mislead you. Go always to his word. Confirm everything. If anything, if if I told you that he said um, that um, if you keep the patience, because you kept the patience of my faith, I will keep you from. If you can't find that in the Bible, then I'm a liar. If you can't find it, but remember to go to the true Bibles, not the corrupted moderns. And... If you remember, Rumble, there is the one that they took down. It also has some very good edification into it. So God bless you. God be with you. May he make his face shine upon you and give you peace. May he be with you in every step that you take. Lift you. Give you strength. Give you health and give you courage but most of all may he give you faith abundantly that you may stand and that you may be ready for him a set apart people a spotless bride ready for her groom to come god bless you all my darlings it is getting really real. Be ready. See you here or there. Preferably there. I love you so much. Bye-bye, loves. Bye. Amen, amen.